Hello my friends and my Evolutionary Energy Arts family. I hope you guys are doing well. So we're going to take a peek into the Kabbalah and we're also going to look at something called the Middle Pillar. And we looked recently at some Qigong techniques such as basically poor breathing and bone breathing. And so there are techniques that are not exclusive to the well let's put it this way they're not exclusive to the the Taoist and the Eastern traditions there are techniques that are also in the Western mystery to the tradition which are basically the same thing they're just they just have different terminology and actually in the West they've been hidden way more why are they hidden in the West well they're hidden in the West because the West has ruled the world and the West is where the Cabal and the Illuminati have based themselves. And as we've touched on before in other videos, the Roman Empire never fell. And the Roman Empire really is an empire that before it existed in other lands as well. And so the people that control the Roman Empire are the same people that ran the Sumerian Empire. And the same people that basically controlled the Greek uh, Empire. And so it's gone on down through time, handed down. And then when the barbarians were at the gates and Rome was about to fall, things switched. And basically they, they just basically switched their modus operandi. And so with Constantine, the Catholic Church was born. And so they've controlled people through the Catholic Church. They control people through all fundamentalist thought. Because fundamentalist thought is mind control. Anything that says there is only one way is complete mind control. And you are buying into the program of the very people that you hate. So if, if you are a fundamentalist, and you are basically yelling out against Satan and against the devil, basically against the Draco and the reptilians. And yet you are espousing philosophical ideas that are fundamentalist in origin. Then you are basically espousing the philosophy of the Draco and the reptilians. Because they control us through fundamentalist mindsets. That's how they pit one of us against the other. And so all throughout history, in the East, much more open than the West. In the West, much more hidden. The truth has been known. And in the Western traditions, which includes Judaism, such traditions as the Kabbalah, is how it's been hidden but taught to those that have understanding because the outer circle the people that will basically embrace any philosophy that they are taught and that will vehemently defend it against all oncomers without logical reasoning well they're allowed to stay in the outer circle those that show wisdom and understanding that show patience, that show the ability to reason, are allowed into the inner circle. And so they are taught the mysteries, such as the Kabbalah, about how things really are, not the illusions that people are given in the outer, not the things that are sold to those of a fundamentalist persuasion that are easily swayed, easily controlled, easily manipulated. So, the Kabbalah originated as an inner esoteric teaching of Judaism. It's a method of teaching which passed from master to disciple, teacher to pupil. Kabbalah is the Hebrew word meaning receive, to receive inner wisdom from mouth to ear in oral tradition. There is no single book called the Kabbalah, rather is Kabbalah, which is basically a body of knowledge the two primary texts are the Sefer Yetzirah, the Book of Foundation, 
and the Zohar, the Book of Splendor. Various spellings can be found in reference to the Kabbalah. These various correspond with different historical periods and translations. And so the Western Hermetic tradition is born out of this, along with other esoteric principles. And I've shared with you guys when I was seven years old, I found a book on this. And it was laid out perfectly for me because this was going to be my life's path. And so I was initiated into the inner circle at a very young age. So when, when people say things like, fear the wrath of God, fear you know your soul burning in torment if you don't believe exactly as we do i have no fear of those things because i understand the illusory aspect of those things i understand that those things were given for people that couldn't understand the deeper mysteries and i understand that that is a very superficial way of looking at things and it's not the accurate way so there is no fear, and there never could be any fear in an illusion, in something that's not real. And so this goes into a deeper understanding of reality. And so much of the Kabbalah is based on the Tree of Life. The term Tree of Life was popularized during the Middle Ages, the Ten Sephiroth, or emanations or spheres of existence each circle sephirah a vessel represents an energy energies across from each other balance one another severity without mercy is cruelty mercy without severity is weakness the tree of life is a visual representation of the path of the return to god or source by ascending from the bottom to top in reverse order, 10 back to 1 through the Sephiroth, or by a more direct path through the middle pillar, or through a more direct path through the middle pillar. The tree of life can be used as a template for a multitude of systems that understand and thus allow one to arrange and order life in a manner of a filing cabinet. If we look at the bottom, Malkuth. Malkuth is where we live. That's the 3D world. We look at Yesud, and that is the foundation. We could view that as the astral realm, which is kind of the foundation for the material 3D realm. Look above that to beauty and Tipareth. Then there is what is known to be an abyss, and we go to Da'ath, or knowledge. And that is the point of the cosmic Christ the bridge without whom there's no way we could know Kether there's no way we could know Kether without Da'ath in a way to Da'ath which comes through Christ and only Christ so to the left you have Hod Geburah and Bina and to the right you have Neshesh and Chesed and Shokhmah. So you have the two pillars on either side, mercy and severity. And then we have the middle path. Who else spoke of the middle path? Question for you guys, who else spoke of the middle path? Somebody said it out there. Yes, Buddha. The middle path the way of Buddha. Not only Buddha, but the middle path is also the way of Christ. He, he is the way, the truth, and the light. And Christ fills the gap at Da'ath. It's only through Christ at Da'ath, which represents knowledge. What's the Greek word for knowledge, my friends? Does anybody have it? The Greek word for knowledge. Gnosis. Gnosis. Where have we heard gnosis? 
Gnosticism. What form of Christianity was completely eradicated from the face of the earth after the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD? The Gnostic Christians. Why? Because they held the truth. They understood. What teachings were given to us from the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD? Well, the, the teachings that led to the Catholic Church. And who is the Catholic Church? They are the extension of the Roman Empire. They are the extension of the Babylonian and Sumerian empires before them. They are the extension of the Illuminati Cabal. They are the extension of the Anunnaki. which is all now being basically manifested through the power of the United States in the world today. Before the United States, the British Empire. These are all connected. So if you are simply believing in the King James Bible, which is a translation that comes from the Latin, which is given to us from the Council of Nicaea, Constantine the Great, who saw a vision to conquer and subjugate the people of the earth under the sign of the cross, which is something that Christ would never ask for. Christ is not a conqueror by military means. Christ doesn't subjugate by force. Christ is the power of love and compassion and mercy. So then you're being deceived, my friends. You're simply being totally deceived by the Kambal, the Illuminati, by the Draco, by Satan himself. For Satan is the Draco. That great evil dragon of old is none other than the Draco, which control the Kambal, which control all of our modern society. They rule it through banking. They rule it through families like the Rothschilds, the Morgans. It goes on and on. All your major corporations, J.P. Chase, so many of these foundations, so many of these corporations, most of them are controlled by these evil entities. They're now controlling the world through Amazon, through Facebook, through YouTube itself, through Google. They know they can't control us for long. That's why they're building their drones. That's why they're building their robot army. You will see drones going down your street. These are going to be armed drones. You're going to see robot mechanical law enforcement and military armed to the teeth. Because it's impossible for half of 1% to control 99.5% without superior technology. And that's what they're doing. So is Christ real? Oh yes, most definitely. Is Christ the most important being that's walked the planet? Yes, in many ways, for sure. But ask yourself, as a good friend asked me today, we know of the stories of Jesus up to age 12. And they, we see him take his adult ministry when he's around 30. And he died at 33. Where was he? Was he just hanging around? Was he just carving wood? Making tables and chairs? Oaken chests? Was he just simply a carpenter's son learning the trade? Or was he Issa? And who is Issa? Well, Google Issa. And you will find that there's legends of Issa. Issa was an amazing healer. And more than that.
So where did he learn? What was he really? Was he divine? Of course. So where did he learn all this? Think of the three wise men. Who were the three wise men? Where did they come from? They came from the east. Where is wisdom held? It's held in the east. Where did Christ go? He went to the east. That's where he received his education, his indoctrination, into the mysteries. That's where he learned all these mysteries. That's where he was anointed with the Holy Spirit. As all of us can be anointed. And the Holy Spirit is real. There is truth in all these things. But understand, where there is fear, that is where the dark ones have inserted their version of things. Our path up the tree of life goes through Christ. But do you really know who he is? Do you really understand? Are you guided by fear and judgment? Or are you guided by love and compassion? Look at his teachings. There was no fear in those teachings. There was only love and compassion, my friends. Only love and compassion. So we see the tree of life can be imposed upon the body. There are names of God. And so I have studied the esoteric traditions. I have studied many things. And not only studied, but I practiced. And I practice every day. So I know how they could change you and affect you in a very positive way. There is so much truth out there. But the truth is not to be found in fundamentalist thinking. For fundamentalist thinking is an invention of those that look to control us. You must look deeper. You must not be so easily fooled. When we look at it, at the bottom we see Malkuth. And the god name corresponding Malkuth is Adonai Haaretz. Yesud is basically at the root chakra. And that is Shaddai El Hai. And then we have Teferet. And that's at the solar plexus chakra, which also is our I Am center. And the God name for that is yod he voh vadath And then Da'ath, which is at the throat chakra. And that's yod he voh elohim And at Kether, at, at the crown chakra. And the God name there is Eheya. And all this is in the Hebrew tradition. And it's all been passed down through the Kabbalah, through the inner circle. So it, when you look in the Bible, it even says there are things that Jesus taught to everybody. There are things that Jesus taught to the disciples. And then there are things that Jesus taught to the inner circle. His most trusted, devoted disciples. And these are parts of those things. The middle pillar exercise is a very powerful exercise. And you could liken it unto Qigong as well. The only difference here is that we're visualizing the chakras and we're charging the chakras with the names of God in Hebrew. So when we look at the crown chakra and we inhale and we draw an energy and we vibrate a heye, a heye up in the crown chakra, 
and we visualize it glowing bright and glowing in the most brilliant crystalline white that you can imagine. We go down to the throat center and we vibrate Yod He Vo He Elohim. And we just do all these repetitively. You could pick a number. I like to do nine because nine is completion. And so visualize and vibrate and feel the intonation in the area while you're vibrating the names of God. Go down to the solar plexus chakra and vibrate Yod He Vo He Eloa Vadat. And you must vibrate it too. Feel it resonate through the chakra. And then go down to your root chakra and do Shaddai El Chai. And then go down to the bubbling wells that we were talking about before in the feet. And there vibrate Adonai Haaretz. So if you are of the Judeo Christian tradition, you should feel good with doing this. If you are not of the Judeo Christian uh, tradition, then you could just visualize and you could change the wording if you wanted to anything that you're comfortable with. However, this is a secret to understand. Even if a being never ever really existed, if enough people believed in that being, there would be an, a current of energy that would exist created by all those people that believed in that, ve that being that anybody could tap into. So, doing this as is and doing it in Hebrew will tap you into a ton of energy because there are thousands of people that have done this on a regular basis. There are thousands, tens of thousands of people that have done this on a regular basis. By doing something on a regular basis, you create a circuit of energy. Everything is energy, my friends. Everything is energy. There is power in anything that many people are focusing on. Let's take something totally, totally different. Let's look at Wolverine from Marvel Comics. Does Wolverine exist? Well, it's a cartoon character. It's a movie character. How could it exist? It does exist because it exists in your minds. Enough people believe and can conceive of Wolverine. We see Wolverine. There's energy going into that concept. So there's energy there that can be tapped into. And this is the type of secret that the Kabbalah and the Illuminati know. And most people don't understand. They think, well, it's not real, so how could there be any power in it? Well, if enough people have focused any energy into it, there's power there that can be tapped into. It's just simply a matter of tapping into it. It's like simply having a plug in your hand that's attached to your being, and then going and plugging it into the channel of Wolverine or the channel of Yahweh, or the channel of Jesus, or the channel of anything you could think of, be it Allah, be it anything you want to think of at all. Anything that more than one person has focused into, especially when you're talking thousands or millions of people, there is energy there that can be tapped into and utilized. And that is the great mystery of what some traditions would call chaos magic. But it's real. Because everything is thought. Everything is energy. Everything is a current. And everything can be tapped into. These are some of the mysteries that the Kabbalah understands. And people that are manipulated by the Kabbalah and kept in fear don't have a clue about. So how can you elevate your energy level? How can you raise yourself up in vibration? By tapping into these energies. Don't tap into a negative energy. You don't want to do that. Tap into positive energies. And yes, a lot of things can, be, can be, be viewed as negative in one sense and positive in another sense. So again, as we talked before, 
so many cultures would take the gods of their enemies and turn them into demons and vice versa now what does that make those energy currents well then it would obviously depend on the user and the user's set of beliefs so you must have clear intention and believe me anybody that has negative intention the law of cause and return or karma will always come back and bite you in the butt it is so much better to have positive vibrations in yourself at all times to always want the best for everyone and want to wake up everybody that is always what we should all hold in our hearts because there's no peace for the wicked ever people that cultivate evil cultivate dissension try to dominate people try to impose their will on people beings that love and create disunity and war they will never never ever know peace they will know nothing but torment and hell and that is where the reality of hell lies it's in your karmic return so when people say repent and believe well there is some truth in that because we should repent we should give up our negative ways now if they're telling us to repent because we're actually a really positive person who happens to believe in Buddhism or Taoism or you know we are Shinto or we're Native American and they think we should adopt their view that's different because we might have already have repented it's not about what your dogma is it's about who are you are you a good person or are you not do you want the the planet's best wishes is that what you're upholding are you upholding love light and peace for people or are you trying to impose your will are you trying to make everybody be just like you and, and thus you're trying to find self-validation because I believe in this set of dogma you must all believe in this dogma in order to justify me and verify me because if you reject that dogma you're rejecting me and thus I am rejected and thus my whole worldview is shaken this is the truth of the matter my friends this is the truth where is your heart it's that simple if your heart's in the right place and you're a buddhist beautiful if your heart's in the right place and you are a muslim then beautiful if your heart's in the right place and you're a christian that's wonderful that's perfect if your heart's in the right place and you're even an atheist and it's possible then that's still fine if you're showing compassion, love, peace, respect for all beings, then that's all fine. The middle pillar exercise can strengthen your aura. It can open up your chakras. It can draw down powerful energies that will enable you to take control of your life. So many people are so worried that if they open up their chakras they're going to be basically the prey of demons demons will be able to take me over if I open up my chakras it's actually the opposite if your chakras are closed you won't know what a demon is you won't you won't have a clue if your crown chakra is open you'll have wisdom and guidance because you'll be connected to your higher self You'll be connected to the higher realms. You'll be connected to pure love and light. And you will know the difference. And you are protected then. If your chakras are not functioning, if, you're, if your crown chakra is closed off, you won't have a clue. You're easily going to be manipulated. You're going to believe the doctrine of devils, so to speak. And you're going to think right is wrong and wrong is right. 
Because you're not going to just know any better. You're, you're not going to be able to discern. Discernment comes from the higher realms. This 3D realm is very, very... Well, it's full of mixed energy, my friends. The higher energies are from a purer place. So it's up to you if, you if you choose. If you're looking for another technique that will lift you up in vibration and you are of the Judeo-Christian roots, persuasion, the middle pillar exercise is a very powerful exercise that will open up your chakras, connect you to the higher realms, and also purge you and cleanse you of lower astral ent entities and recognize that there are lower astral entities. There are ent entities that will basically take advantage of you. When I was younger, before I had a regular practice, I was attacked many times by these lower energies. And it was not always easy to get rid of them, but they would go. When I was the first night in my own apartment, I was 18 years old, laying down in bed, and something came on top of me, and, and I couldn't move. And it totally pinned me down, and it was just pure blackness and dark. And I struggled, but I tried as hard as I could to ask Jesus to help me, you know, and God to help me. And then slowly, slowly, it left. And got off of me. And then the second night it came back again. And I was a little firmer and quicker. And it went and, and it was gone. And then I actually went and asked my girlfriend. If she would mind if I took her cat. To, to have it in the apartment with me. Because I wanted something else that was living. In the apartment with me. And that helped. And so. Later on in life. When I was with my ex-wife, she woke me up once and was terrified. She, was, she actually jumped on top of me like a cat, digging her claws into me and pointing to the corner, to the top of the, of the uh, ceiling. And I, at first I didn't see anything. I said, what, what, what? Somebody in the house? And she just kept pointing. Then I could see it. And there was this black entity with glowing red eyes. And it was the second time I've seen this entity, <coughs> or an entity of that type. The first time I saw it, when my son was sleeping in bed with me. And he was eight years old. And uh, he had, had been plagued by nightmares, so he wanted to sleep in the bedroom with me. And so he came in the bedroom with me. And for some reason, I woke up in the middle of the night, and I saw this thing that was black. Black as a black hole. It, it, it was just like a... It was an all-consuming black. And it had black eyes. And it looked at me. I mean, it had glowing red eyes. And it looked at me. When I saw it hovering over my son, it was doing something like it was taking his energy, his life force. And it looked at me and it hissed like a snake. And so I instinctively got really mad and puffed up and moved right towards it as soon as I could and said, basically, get the bleep out of here, you know, and... and basically struck out at it and it took right off and fled right away and with my ex-wife when she was clutching on top of me like that and it was the same entity I recognized what it was so I got up and I did a ritual called the lesser banishing ritual of the pentagram which comes out of the hermetic tradition and it comes out of the golden dawn in which basically you call on the powers of the archangels to come and protect and it left and I got it out of the house and, and actually the house settled down after that and there was nothing else that came in so I know these things work and I know the archangels are real and I know there's power in the names of God and this is part of the reason why those in the know never gave out the vowels because they kept the power for themselves these names have tremendous power. 
And so the priestly class kept that power to themselves. They kept it from us, from everybody else, so they could use it for themselves. The Cabal, the Illuminati, they keep these things from us so they could use it for themselves and not have us use it potentially against them. It's been given to us now because knowledge is spreading. These are the last days. And knowledge is spreading. Understanding spreading. And we're learning. And so this is totally up to you. I'm just giving you guys another tool if you wish to embrace it. And you could do your own research on it as well. As I've shared with you, I call on the four archangels every day. Usually twice a day, if not more. And I've done that for probably 25 to 30 years. So I feel protected, in a sense, for sure. I feel very, very protected. Though I recognize that, you know, life is always precious and tenuous. And when it's our time, it's our time. You know, when we fulfill our purpose. But it is about purpose. And I know my purpose is to show you guys these things. To make you guys aware of the reality of things. And to try to enlighten more people bring you guys out of the dark whoever is in the dark most of you guys already know so much of this and uh, yeah you're amazing and I am truly in awe of so many of you out there there's so many beautiful enlightened souls that are doing their very best to anchor the light in even in face of danger, personal danger. So I just want to share these techniques with you guys and make you guys aware. And I plan on sharing with you guys many, many more things that are so-called hidden. Because that's all the occult is. It's just hidden knowledge that's been kept out of the public view. Because they don't want you to know. Because if you know, then you're as powerful as they are. And they can't have that. So as always, my friends, please thumbs up to support the channel. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Please do click the bell so you get all the updates. And share, share, share with as many friends as possible so we can wake up as many people as possible to what's really going on in this world. As always, my friends, may you be blessed with love, light, peace, and abundance. May the Christ dwell within you. And may understanding and compassion always grow within you. And may we share our knowledge with each other and grow together and help manifest the heaven on earth that we so want, need, and that humanity actually deserves because we've gone through enough. God bless my friends. Namaste.